For years, most people believed that Finnish ancestry followed the same pattern seen across Northern Europe. But recent research shows that this idea was incomplete. New genetic studies reveal a structure in Finnish DNA that does not match the standard European model and challenges older explanations. These findings show that Finland's population formed through two separate ancestry sources that remained distinct for thousands of years. The real story is far more complex than what many were taught, and understanding it requires looking at both archaeology and genetics together. Once these records are compared, a clearer picture appears, one that changes how we understand the origins of the Finnish people. And this is only the surface of what the data reveals. Why do Finns stand out genetically from most of Europe despite living at the continent's northern edge? Researchers noticed early on that Finnish DNA did not fully match the pattern seen in nearby populations. While Finland is part of Europe geographically, genetic studies showed a combination of ancestry types that did not appear in the same way elsewhere. This raised an important question. Why does Finland show a mixture that suggests two separate ancestral sources? Scientists call this a dual origin, meaning Finnish ancestry includes both Western European and Eastern-related components. To understand how this formed, researchers needed more than DNA alone. Archaeology and genetics had to be studied together to trace when each ancestral layer entered the region. But what event triggered the first major split between Finnish ancestry and the rest of Europe? What do the earliest settlers of Finland tell us about the foundations of the modern population? After the Ice Age ended, small groups of hunter-gatherers moved into the region and formed the first long-term communities. Their DNA is linked to the Western hunter-gatherer group, a population seen across much of Northern Europe at the time. These early settlers developed adaptations suited to the conditions they lived in, and some of these traits remain traceable in modern Finns. Archaeological finds, including tools and simple artifacts, show steady cultural practices that continued for many generations. These records help researchers understand how the first population layer in Finland was established. Yet these early Europeans were only the beginning. Something unexpected was moving toward the north from thousands of kilometers away. What population movement introduced a completely different linguistic and genetic layer into Finland? This change is linked to the arrival of Proto-Uralic groups who moved westward from regions far to the northeast. Their numbers were not large, but their cultural and linguistic impact was significant, eventually shaping the development of Uralic languages in the area. Genetic studies show a clear, eastern-related signal connected to these groups, marking a contrast with the earlier hunter-gatherer ancestry. These migrants were accustomed to living in northern environments and brought knowledge and practices suited to those conditions. Their arrival added a new layer to Finland's genetic and cultural history, forming the second major ancestry source in the region. But how did these two groups, European hunter-gatherers and Uralic migrants, merge into a single population? Can archaeology reveal how two distant worlds interacted in prehistoric Finland? Evidence from early sites shows pottery styles that combine elements seen in Baltic regions with features linked to Siberian traditions. Tool collections also display mixed forms, suggesting knowledge shared between the earlier hunter-gatherers and the incoming Uralic groups. Instead of one population replacing another, the material record points to coexistence, with communities adapting and learning from each other over long periods. Settlement patterns indicate slow integration as groups lived near one another while maintaining some distinct practices. These physical traces help outline how contact took place, but they do not fully explain the genetic outcome of this interaction. Still, cultural clues are only half the story. What does ancient DNA say about this merging? What patterns repeatedly appear whenever scientists test ancient remains from Finland? 
the results consistently show two main ancestry layers. One comes from Western hunter-gatherers and early European farmers, groups that shaped much of Northern Europe. The other source is Siberian-related ancestry linked to the arrival of Uralic-speaking populations. In many regions of Finland, the Western components make up roughly 70 to 75 percent of the genetic profile, while the Eastern components account for about 20 to 25 percent. These proportions vary by location but remain noticeably higher in Eastern ancestry than in most neighboring populations. This contrast is what makes Finland's genetic structure stand out, since nearby groups generally show much lower levels of the same Eastern signal. But which genetic marker provides the clearest evidence of Eastern ancestry's long-term impact? What single Y chromosome lineage became a defining feature of Finnish paternal ancestry? Research points to haplogroup N, especially its N1C branch, which has clear origins in Siberia before moving west into northern Europe. Today, this lineage appears at high frequencies in Finland, marking one of the strongest genetic links to early Uralic-speaking groups. In contrast, many maternal lines in Finland remain tied to older European populations, showing continuity from the region's earliest settlers. This difference between paternal and maternal patterns suggests that the eastern migration involved more men than women, who then mixed with established European communities. The result is a population shaped by both long-standing local ancestry and incoming eastern influences. But genetics alone cannot explain why these mixed populations remained so distinct over time. Something else played a major role. How did Finland's landscape help preserve ancestry patterns that faded elsewhere? The region's wide forests, numerous lakes, and long distances between settlements limited contact between groups for much of early history. Population density stayed low, and there were few large migrations compared with other parts of Europe. Because movement was restricted, new ancestry layers entered slowly and older genetic patterns remained visible for much longer than in more connected regions. This slow turnover explains why Finland still shows a combination of Western and Eastern components that elsewhere became diluted over time. The population developed in relative stability, allowing both early European and later Uralic contributions to remain clear in modern DNA. Yet isolation did not prevent cultural change. So how did language maintain a deep link to the East? Why is the Finnish language one of the strongest living clues of early Eastern migrations? Finnish belongs to the Uralic language family, which includes Estonian, Sami, and several distant languages spoken across parts of Siberia. This connection signals that the early Eastern groups who entered the region left a linguistic layer that remained stable over time. Even with influence from surrounding Indo-European languages, Finnish kept its core structure, vocabulary, and grammar. This continuity shows that language acted as a long-lasting marker of Eastern ancestry, surviving alongside the mixed genetic background of the population. Today, Finnish identity is understood as the result of both Western and Eastern origins, reflected in DNA and language alike. And this leads to the central question, what does this dual origin ultimately tell us about how populations form and evolve? 